Is there any relevance between diet and meditation? Yes, there is. How does it make no. any difference? If we, uh, if we are to go deep in meditation, you will have to regulate your diet. Meditation is like seven string star. If your one string is loose, you cannot produce music. You have a musical instrument, you have to discipline all these strings, then only you can produce music. So food is also very important uh, for meditation. If you go, want to go deep in meditation, and in, even in yoga, you, you have to take care of your food. Food should be light, it should give you energy, but not excitement, and should not make you happy. And heavy, that's a general rule. But that I don't want to elaborate, because every country, every culture has different food habits. So what we recommend in Nepal may not be relevant in England. But the general rule is, the food should be light, it should not make you heavy, it should not give you, make you sleepy, and at the same time it should not give you intoxication. It should give you energy, but not intoxication. So these are general rules on which you can discipline your food. So you are vegetarian? I am vegetarian. How are you vegetarian? Yeah, I became vegetarian when I started yoga. My family in Nepal, you know that 99% people is non based the whole country mountainous country, everybody eat meats. So we were also, I was born in a meat eater family and uh, we were eating meat all the three times. We were, uh, purely non his family. But uh, after I started yoga, I disciplined my food and I became vegetarian. And after I joined Osho, um, uh, I, I, I he told me the beauty of becoming vegetarian and significance of becoming vegetarian. So after I met Osho, I have dropped on completely meat. So in Indian subcontinent, we see there have been great masters, spiritual leaders, spiritual guru, great. But once they died and they basically work finished over, they didn't progress. But in Osho, we see that after his death, his work is basically progressing all that, over the that's world. A What's that, the reason? That's the difference between uh, real guru and teacher. They are, they are teacher of meditation. I, 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 I can call myself a teacher of meditation. I teach meditation. But I am not guru. I cannot take responsibility of this. I can just instructor of meditation. So there are the, all those people who appear on TV and radio and become popular. They are not really guru. They are just teachers. No? But they claim themselves guru. So what happens after they, they die, their school finishes. Because whatever popularity and whatever thing was done it, it, because by the personal charisma of that person. And after the person uh, has left his body, the whole movement subsides. It will happen with many masters, like Sai Baba is very popular in India. But once the Sai Baba will leave his body, his movement will slack. You know? So it happens with many masters. But the real master, like Jesus, when Jesus was in his body, only 11 people were following him. But after he left his body, one third of humanity is Christian. It happened with Muhammad. When, when Muhammad is alive, very few people dare to travel with him and follow him. But now it is the second largest religion in the world. It same will happen with Osho. When Osho was alive in his physical body, very few dared him. They, they had the courage to travel with Osho because there was a lot of controversy around him and people, he was criticized all over the world. So there were very courageous people, only hundred, you can count in fingers, who were his intimate disciples, who followed him all the time. But after he left his body, it is going to happen the same which happened with Muhammad, which happened with Jesus, which happened with Buddha. His, my understanding is this, the Osho is going to become uh, more popular than all these three names which I have uttered. In 100 years, his books will be printed more than Bible, Quran and Gita. And more the statue of Osho will be made than Buddha. Because his teaching has such a force and it, 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 it is such a convincing and logical teaching that the humanity, once you read Osho, you cannot say no.
Anybody with intelligence and will read Osho will cannot say no to him. So he is going to, he is a Buddha of the future. So what, what do you think about Buddha? Was he reincarnated? No, Buddha didn't believe in incarnation. Although Hindu consider him an incarnation of Vishnu. Hindu consider in the beginning Hindu criticized Buddha because Buddha was against Veda, the most important books of Hindu. Also, um, Buddha was against Veda and also was uh, not believing, uh, Buddha was, he was, didn't believe in God. So Hindu thought that he is an Astic uh, and he is a non-believer and he is against uh, the religion. So in the beginning Hindu criticized. But once Buddha became popular because of his charisma, charisma, because of his energy, because of his personality, when whole Asia became Buddhist, then Hindu accepted him as his another incarnation of Vishnu. This is a trick. This is a trick. Because you cannot oppose him. You, you oppose him when he was alive, when he is dead, now you accept him as a it's a trick. So we don't believe that he is an incarnation. Uh, actually, we believe that everybody is an incarnation of God, potential God. And there is not a particular person that Rama or Krishna or Jesus, those who are incarnation. We don't believe that they are only begotten son of God. Every you, me, he, every, we all are begotten son of God because potentially we have the same potential as it was with Jesus or Muhammad or Krishna or Buddha. There is no difference. The only thing that whether we actualize our potential or we keep it remain as it is. So if you if you allow your potential to flower, you will become Buddha. We all are future. So why people find it difficult to sit in silence? Because their mind is too active. The way our civilization has grown, we have given so much stress to the mind. The body is neglected, the heart is neglected. There, 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 there are many elements in life. Mind is one element, one faculty. Heart is another faculty. Physical body is another faculty. But all the other faculty has been neglected. And only one faculty, mind, has been given undue attention, undue advice. Uh, uh, privilege mind has given. So mind has become too active and and people's mind is so suppressed when they, they sit in silence a lot of things start coming from their unconscious mind. The, all the suppressed anger, sex, fear and they don't, those feelings does not allow them to sit in silence. So it is very difficult to sit in silence without doing some technique. And that's why we teach meditation technique, especially cathartic technique. By doing the cathartic technique, you can silence your mind and then it will become easy for you to sit for, in silence for hours. So what's that, is that technique? Then those techniques like I told, uh, I told you one of the Kundalini meditation is one of the beautiful meditation. Because half an hour, you do the catharsis of the body. So after half an hour, your mind, uh, you are ready to sit in silence. The best is dynamic meditation, which we do every morning. It consists of catharsis for 10 minutes. For 10 minutes, we allow people to, to uh, release their suppressed emotion. They can scream, they can uh, shout, they can jump. Whatever tension and stress is there, we allow them to unfold it and release it. So that's very powerful meditation. So those type of meditation help people to become silent. And what, uh, what's that uh, Vipassana? Vipassana is a meditation designed by, actually Vipassana is not designed by Buddha. It is a misunderstanding. People think that it is designed by Buddha. Actually, if you, have, you, are, uh, you read Vigyan Bharatanda, so you, you might have find that actually Vipassana was designed by Shiva. Because it is a, another form of Anapanshati Yoga, breathing exercise. The first five uh, exercise preach in the Vigyan Vada Tantra is on breath, breath awareness. So actually Vipassana started from Shiva. So it is a breath awareness meditation. 
Buddha became enlightened by Vipassana, by attaining awareness of breath. So he preached Vipassana. It's a very powerful technique. Um, I respect that technique. But for modern mind, who is so much suppressed by emotion, fear, love, tension, it's very difficult to go directly in Vipassana. Because once you start sit and try to concentrate on breath, so many things will come in your mind because of this suppression and tension. So we recommend that first people should do some active meditation, cathartic meditation. Then if they do the Vipassana, they will be benefited more. Do teach any Buddha, Buddha meditation as well? A Buddhist meditation? Yeah, actually meditation is universal. There is no meditation like Buddha meditation or Hindu meditation. There are some Buddhist particular meditation. Yeah, there are some technique which they call their meditation. But actually I told you the, the roots of those meditation can be found out in Vigyan Bharatan. How can we say the, the Buddha meditation? No? The universal meditation. And meditation does not belong to any particular religion. No? We believe that meditation is a God gift of the existence. And it cannot be level. Like physics cannot be Christian physics. It cannot be Hindu chemistry. No? Chemistry is a science. So meditation is a science of the soul. So it cannot be Hindu, Buddhist or Christian. It is just a science of the soul. Like a, uh, physics is a science of the matter. So meditation is a science of the soul. So it is a universal. And what for Zen? Mm -hmm. There are quite few Zen meditation. There are Zen meditation. They are also powerful technique. But I, as I told you, that those techniques were designed thousands of years before, when people were silent, life was simple, and there was not much stress. So people can sit and watch the wall for hours. One of the Zen meditation is Zazen. You sit in the front of the wall and watch the wall for hours. It was easy for the people 500 years before, because life was simple, and there was not much stress. But for modern demand, modern humanity, if you sit and just watch a wall, you will start seeing many visions. Your mind will start creating many dreams. So those meditations like Zazen, Vipassana, all those meditations were designed for simple people that people do not exist. So we make people simple by doing cathartic meditation. First we recommend dynamic meditation, Kundalini meditation. After doing this meditation for six months or, or a year, people mind become silent, then they can do the Zazen, they can get to do the Vipassana. Those are the meditations which need first some active background.